Hey gentlemen, so workout volume. Workout volume is said to be the main driver of hypertrophy and you, you hear it all the time and you see it all the time, both on Instagram and on YouTube. But the thing is that this cannot be further from the truth. The truth is that workout volume is actually irrelevant for hypertrophy and people saying that workout volume is actually the main driver of hypertrophy are actually just saying that to sound clever so that maybe you buy their workouts i don't know or follow them on instagram or like their pics i don't know but it's this one thing that gets copy paste and passed around like uh, a intellectual baton and people who copy paste them and say it and praise it like oh workout volume you know it's the most important thing for hypertrophy is your workout volume volume is the is the main driver of hypertrophy well the thing is that is not it's not really the main driver of hypertrophy it's not even a driver of hypertrophy per se it's kind of irrelevant it's a byproduct of your workout just like CO2 in cars is a byproduct of an engine that combusts petrol. A combustion engine actually has a byproduct that is CO2, but that does not mean that CO2 drives the car forward. That's asinine. And we can start to unravel and poke holes in this theory simply by looking at the first principles so as a principle work or volume is defined by the work that you do in a workout so work is force over the distance and it's measured in energy right it's the force that you have to do over a distance that you have to cover and that defines the work that you did to move an object from point A to B. Nice. And that is defined by energy, the energy that you spend on it. Well, if you are, let's say, running a marathon, you are doing a lot of work. That's a lot of volume. And how come marathon runners have those skinny ass legs? Well, it doesn't make any sense. If, if volume drives hypertrophy well those marathon runners should be jacked as hell those legs should be huge and they're not we all know that they have skinny legs well then they come back and they say well it's it's not fair to compare that because it's not the same style of training we are comparing resistance training to endurance training the, the intensity and and so on and so forth and so they say that Okay, within a resistance training paradigm, a frame of work, the volume argument actually comes out to be true. That's what they say. Well, it so happens that it does not come true. That's the problem. The problem is that when we actually apply this theory and we falsify the theory and we put it to work, Scientific papers have demonstrated that you can get the same hypertrophy outcome within a very array of workout volumes. So you have your classic hypertrophy training, that is the dude that does three sets of 10 for seven exercises. So he has like a 21 set volume. And then you have a powerlifting dude that does five sets of five. And then you have the endurance resistance training or the low intensity resistance training. And that's the dude that does four sets of 20 reps for, let's say, five exercises. So the low intensity, the bodybuilder, and the powerlifter. Uh, excuse me, I don't have a great analogy for the low intensity dude, but... You get the point. And the point 
is or the volume point is that all of those guys have very different workout volumes the low intensity the, the, the dude that goes for 20 reps is the one that gets the more the more work done he has the highest volume and the powerlifter the powerlifter has the lowest volume but when we actually put this theory to work and we put people in controlled groups it actually comes out that all of them gain the same amount of world, uh, of muscle so they build muscle at the same speed and rate right and that's because workout volume is is irrelevant the fact that the low intensity dude does more volume per workout per week per month than the powerlifting dude or the bodybuilder dude is irrelevant when it all is said and done they both gain the same amount of muscle mass right because what actually drives hypertrophy is not volume it's actually effort the effort that you put in each and every set is what actually drives the signal amplifies the signal and the more effort you put in a in each and every set the less set you need to do this has been used by innumerous bodybuilders from dorian yates dorian yates had very low volume but each and every set that he did was grueling it was maximum effort so the more effort you put into each and every set the more demanding it is for your muscle fibers the more they get the point so forget about volume focus on effort and you will come to find out that volume is actually irrelevant